Hello, this is Krusty here again today, and um, I just kind of want to do like a free flow one right now um, as to uh, where I'm at in my process of recovery, especially for um, a really huge one that I uh, started working on alongside of my addiction recovery is narcissism. Um, narcissism is another name for a abuser and um, be it that might be your partner in life, be it either a man or a woman, um, because it can be either or, um, you know, in the workforce, um, neighbors, uh, bully type of friends or whatever. Um, this one has been such a huge one for me because um, it was just a real eye opener when um, uh, all my life I've been in and out of relationships that never lasted for more than a few years um, and um, was just kind of always felt like I was treated like crap by the guy and he was always like a big jerk and um finally I'm beginning to realize why and that it wasn't really that it wasn't really me and that I was just a victim um <clears throat> slash survivor um since my last relationship uh where he finally just left he was an alcoholic and a narcissist um slash abuser um, after he started, uh, after the honeymoon ended, where, of course, he, abusers will treat you like gold and, um, mirror you and, t and, uh, you know, tell you that, uh, you're, they're, that you're perfect for each other and that, um, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful, and you're like the angel sent from heaven and, you know, all this love bombing strategy to hook to hook their uh, victims in like they usually do. Um, you know, he used to take me out and just lavish me and all the and all this give me constant attention. And um, after that phase ends, which as the abuse cycle goes in a circle, um, the next one they they do start devaluing. Which, um, <clears throat> the devaluing stage started and that's when I became aware that something was not right and something was really wrong. When he started calling me names, um, just all kinds and, and telling me that I wasn't doing this or that right or I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that and I should be quiet and just terrible, terrible names like whore and bitch and just, you know, I mean... Which I wasn't really any of these. Maybe sometimes I could be a bitch, but you know, that's just, you know, everybody can be, have be in a bad mood sometimes. But it just went beyond that, you know, and I, I knew there was something wrong and it just got really bad to the point that he would smash things because he was more kind of along the lines of malignant um, when he would get into his rages and, um... I started to read books about it. I'm like, you know, like uh, books about why is he do why does he do this and and the, the verbally abusive man and everything, which finally led me to the term narcissism. And I just started studying the living crap out of it <laughs> as time went on. And um, thank God I finally went onto YouTube and found all these uh, really great ones like Melanie Tanya Evans, you know, and um, who, uh, was constantly popping out YouTube videos about what is narcissism and why and why does he do this and why does he do that and why do I feel like this and why do I feel like that? For about a year, I obsessively just learned every single day for at least a few hours every single day, um, and turned on these YouTube tapes. Well, you know, it... It's really pulled me out of so much and gradually I was able to go like this with him until uh, even eventually the discard phase came where as I began to stand up to it he could no longer stand it and he no longer had that power over me that he once did when I didn't know what was going on or how to handle it or to stand up for myself 
And uh, finally he moved on with his life and got another place to live and all that. Um, <laughs> this, this was a very hard process for me and it is a very hard process, period, for anybody that, um, goes under this undubber, but even if they don't, even if they stay where they're at, you know, it's, it's going to, um, also be a bad state for themselves as well, um, when they're just constantly trapped, uh, under somebody that's constantly kicking at you in different ways. So, um, yes, this is the point that I'm at right now where I am finally by myself and um, the first stage of recovery is, as I've learned, that at first you do, you get your hands on, you just start pulling for, desperately trying to pull for things like books, get your hands on information about how to help you, and at first it will tell you to get out of the situation with that victim. And, um, of, of course, um, I know a lot of the times a person can't just quickly you know, immerse themselves from that person just overnight, and it uh, does take time. And, um, you know, for your own safety measures, there are certain ways that you have to protect yourself while getting away from this person, and um, because of uh, behalf of yourself, and if our children are involved, pets are involved, <laughs> whatever, you know, and um, you have to find yourself a, a safer place to live and all that. Well, that's kind of what I ended up doing finally. Um, um, because the last apartment that we lived at, my dad, uh, I was renting it from my dad. And um, he would like kick, when I would lock the door and he didn't have a key, he would, he would uh, kick the doorknob off and break into the apartment and come in and just move all over me, you know, mad. And, and it was scary. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, I finally, I finally did, um, learn through books and things that I needed to find a safe place for myself. And I did. I got another apartment without his name on it, um, just my name. And um, then I, I had to uh, get a police protection order against him when I moved as well. So he had to stay away from here. And um, that, that was hard, too, because I was just so attached to him um, with my codependency and everything. Um <coughs> And we had went through it. We had really trauma bonded together um, <clears throat> because we had both faced mold sickness together and, and, and uh, went through drugs together and everything. But, um, you know, I finally realized that there, uh, there was a place where I realized I could not help him when he didn't want that help for himself. And um, so, um, you know... That's the thing about narcissists is that uh, usually they really don't want that help. And they, of course, you can't change a person and uh, they don't want to recover. You are the one that is the first one that is going to be recovering. You are the one that does need to do the uh, healing work on the inside and face that this person or that person is not really any good. <laughs> And will never be, be, even how many years that you've tried. And uh, that, you know, um, it's a dangerous place to be when you're with a person like this. Because not only can they harm you uh, emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually, you know. Uh, they can, they can, I mean... They can really just um, almost, you know, besides devastate a person. I mean, I, when when we got sick together, um, the environment that he had put me in during that time was uh, when we went through the drugs, he, uh, we had to move to an old trailer. We ended up moving to this old camper trailer that hadn't intense mold inside of it and I remember feeling gut feeling like this isn't good this isn't good my safety thing just started going off 
and we ended up getting really, really, really sick, and we could have died. I mean, we could have got cancer from the black mold sickness that was so intense we were just coughing and puking all the time. And uh, that's what narcissists can do. They can put you in really unsafe places and in and environments and in situations that can also make you physically ill. Um, I'm not going to try to blame him, him all for it because we do have to take the responsibility for ourselves. That is the thing, okay? But we do need to forgive ourselves and maybe even uh, work on forgiving that person because um, even though we were a victim to them, we can begin to break that cycle. And um, But uh, mainly, you know, start becoming at peace with everything in life. So um, this is a huge step and process, but I tell you what, um, at 41 years old, I feel like it is time that I start standing my ground and um, learning and learning as much as I can about um, now um, since I've moved from the one of the first stages of recovery from uh, reading everything I can about it and learning as much as I can and start being accepting it like aha really wow well, maybe I am going to be okay with this after all I'm not so upset anymore about the whole thing like what in the world this is terrible they're a narcissist you know so um, coming out of that I am going starting the second phase which includes self-healing and uh, it, looking internally about the self and the things that we need to heal like our own codependency so right now I'm reading Codependency for Dummies, which at first I thought wasn't that great because it sounded like, well, it was just for stupid people, but it's actually not. Um, the more learning, the better. And I just continue to read things. And um, I just want to say that it is so worth it, especially when you've been through hell and back, uh, like with my last job as a stripper. And... Um, you know, I was beaten during that too and uh, put with uh, extremely scary type of individuals and it was just another unsafe uh, environment where you're just constantly stressed like this and your anxiety and anxiety attacks and just really depression and all that. So uh, it's a very scary place to be. And I hope that um, I can be a role model for everybody out there um, that is listening and maybe feeling or wanting that change deep inside themselves as well, even a tiny bit, um, maybe to help other people wake up out of the sleep that they've been in and, um, the sad state of life that, um, you know, maybe you're at with, uh, maybe some family members or your partners or whoever. Um, I know there's a lot of it in this world. And especially over in Afghanistan. I just read an article this morning and it was so sad that, you know, women are, aren't even hardly allowed out of the houses because of the wars that are going over there. And and um, it's just, you know, it's a really, really sad place that uh, women can get beaten and killed, you know, for just, uh, you know, not being able to join in the world and reaching their goals and dreams and hiding instead. Um, that's a really sad place to be, I know, because I've been there and... And I'm still doing such a huge amount of recovery work. And um, I hope and pray for all the rest of you out there. And um, I really enjoy doing this. And even if nobody ever listens to me, and I know I, I have a tooth out now, which probably doesn't look very good. But um, to get past that um, and accept that me for who I am and not worry about what other people think. And maybe I have some an important message to give. Um, <clears throat> it also helps me to um to do this because the videos are fun and um and it's fun sharing so thank you <laughs> and have a blessed day peace